Farm Base version 2 is here. This base is specifically designed for solos, duos. This is very cheap. This can be done in phases, stages that are very, very cheap. You can get this thing up and running, the beginning set, for, what, 20 minutes in the beginning of a wipe. It is a terrain bunker base, and you can have this completely set up with no metal and no BPs whatsoever, although this is completely decked out, obviously. But what makes this wedge so fantastic is it has built-in farming water purification, cloning area, and a mixing table to help you get those boosting teas. Yes, for scrap, for ore, for everything that you could possibly imagine. You've got a grow operation here on the first floor, and then you've got a grow operation here once you expand a little bit further, and you can store all this very valuable water. And it's fantastic for getting started on a wipe, whether you start off solo, duo, even a trio if you want to. And uh, this can even support a main base as this will get you started and this is a great flank base or even a farming base so let's jump into it so this is the floor plan we have right here let me go ahead and back up Woo. and we're going to try to make this a bit faster we already have a version of this but we made some minor tweaks okay so we're going to try to keep this floor plan in the same position you can see the tool cupboard there so this starts off as a two by one terrain bunker base and you can see the farming section there at the lower bottom middle it be bottom middle. You can see the water purification, and then we have these uh, drop boxes on the side and everything else. So I'll try to occasionally zoom back like this so you guys can see this whole configuration. So let's let's go ahead and uh, give you some feature walkthroughs real fast, and then the upkeep, and then we'll go ahead and start building this bad boy. Okay, so the upkeep with everything decked out with the metal and the armored floor tiles. Everything here, here's the upkeep for a day. 2,654 stone, 670 metal fragments, 402 wood, and 8 high quality. And again, you can start to scale this up as you need to. So we're looking at 3 stone nodes, uh, 2 metal nodes, 1 tree, and then technically, what, 4 metal nodes if you can only get that through high quality through that way. Um, very manageable. And again, we'll do this in small stages where it starts with a 1 by 2 and you can do this with like, what, 5,000 stone, 2,000 wood. It's very, very cheap. And even when the bunker's sealed here, uh, we've got drop boxes here above our furnaces to help do a pass-through if you want to have things kind of go in and out. Because, uh, you know, when you're solo, sometimes uh, sealing that bunker up again can be costly. Uh, the water purification area here, we'll kind of show you this real fast. It will be manual as sticking a pump outside is not advised because it will take you some time uh, not only to fill it up, but people can whack it down pretty easily. You can see right here, you would take these water jugs in the middle of the night, walk outside your door, fill up the salt water, and then you take the input here of this water container where you stick all your salt. And then if you go over here, we have a timer for the water purifier as to not use too much power. And it will take the salt water, pump it in, and take the clean water and pump it upstairs to the other area here where you can do the other part of your grow up. And once you have a full container, you can start to top this off by putting more water jugs in here and then uh, unloading your water storage. We have a second floor storage here with compartments just above the main TC. You have a locker in the back cabinet. This is your main entrance here that has another uh, locker area. Well, not locker, I'm sorry, a refrigerator and a furnace, and then you've got drop off here for wood, charcoal from burning, and this is one of your doors here to the outside with a single pass through airlock, and with wood trim on the outside, and that's on purpose to kind of hide what's going on. We have two solar panels to fuel the whole operation. We have a built-in medium battery downstairs by the tool cupboard itself. And again, if you want to expand your grow operation, you can knock out this wall here and then uh, make a larger space on top. And then you can stone these out if you want to here, but this kind of adds to the urban camouflage, as it were, for the entire wedge, T-Wedge bunker base version two. I'll give you a nice little spin around and then we'll attack it. Okay, so again, this is a terrain bunker base. So you do need a slat of terrain that is slightly sloped with certain areas buried. Now this works the best on the shoreline because it's fairly consistent the way this does work. So if you kind of watch here, if you have your uh, triangle pieces, actually let's move up just a little bit further. We want to make sure we're doing this relatively fast. You can do this inland as well. Uh, if you take the broad side, so the left side of this triangle, I sink it in the ground just where I can see the vertical post but not the horizontal. And then I place that there. That can be where the mechanism for the terrain bunker is going to be. This will be some of the honeycomb, the other honeycomb, and then we'll place another triangle here, and then a square. We do want to check some of this here to make sure that everything runs correctly. And we'll place this here. This is where the two by one starts. I just kind of want to test to make sure that these can be placed. We'll take a triangle roof tile. Yep, that's green. We're good here. And then if we wanted to do an elevated piece here, we can. Okay, we're good. 
All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to place this here and then this here. I'm going to go ahead and pull back. You'll do this on one swoop, but I think this will kind of help. And again, the terrain part is off to my left, and the rest of it will make sense here in a minute. All right, so if you do get started with very minimal resources, I often will start with this. I'll start with this back side here, these triangle pieces. I won't even stick a roof tile on top, to be perfectly honest with you. And then if you want to get your um, shelf in, which this is very dangerous to do with your pieces on you, right, with all your materials. But what you can do here is you can place a slab, and then you can place a triangle here as well. You kind of get yourself a wooden shelf. And then you're going to place a door here. Uh, most likely a wooden double door. You'll knock this out later. This will kind of just keep you nice and secure. You can knock this out. And then on the interior here, you've got your space for your battery and then your space for your tool cupboard as well. So let me go ahead and just bring this down. Hopefully this all makes sense. This isn't too crazy. Again, I'll try to make this go rather quickly. All right, so on this back side here, we are going to put a wall frame with the soft side facing you. Then we're going to open this door. Then we're going to place our tool cupboard in the back, knobs facing you best you can in the back corner and then strafe over to the right place a lock, and then we're going to place a bunch of materials. Obviously, I have admin materials here. Super crazy amounts, two million a piece. Uh, obviously, this is a custom server. A lot of times, I'll leave this twig until I know I've got the medium battery good to go. And then this way, you're kind of safe, right? Um, when you get a chance, maybe place a, a ceiling tile here and a ceiling tile there, but we'll kind of wait on those so you guys can see what's going on here. We're going to place a door here. Make this all stone. We're going to pull back here in a second so you guys can see what's going on. Now, technically, you don't even need a metal door here, but I will place one. Let me pull back so you guys can see what's going on. I'm going to leave the roof tiles off for just a little bit longer while I take a swig as well. And again, this will take you, what, 6,000-ish stone, give or take? And then really, you'll be good because look at this. This door here acts as an airlock for this. And so you only have a single pass through, which is nice, because let's be honest, in the beginning, it's about fighting for that ground and not getting clapped. All right, so as the wipe goes on, you're going to get more materials to make furnaces. You're going to start stacking them in the back corner here like this. Obviously, three is a lot to start. And now we're going to do the bunker mechanism on the back here. And to uh, obviously close off the top of this as well. So you're going to place another door here, a wall here. Go ahead and make that stone. You can technically make that wood, but I'm going to try to do these on the upgraded version first. Just to kind of move things along. And then we need to make sure we place a tile here. And then if we back up, I'll kind of show you what this looks like again. Oops. If we get up on the roof here, let's just go ahead and close these up. Just quick. Oh my goodness. Go ahead and pull back. All right, so you can see to the left, we have Twig in the groove, uh, almost to my character's left by her head. That's going to be where the mechanism's going to be. Wee. Okay, so let's go ahead and flush this out here. Let's go ahead and make that stone and this stone as well. And we're going to make this back piece, the triangle. This is going to be part of the main bunker mechanism. And then here, we're going to place the soft side facing you. I know it seems a little crazy, but we're actually going to make this for the farming part of this. And then we're just going to double check to make sure that all of this works properly. And again, you don't have to have a metal door for this one either. Um, you really can just leave this as wood. And really, you could just seal the bunker if you wanted to, to be perfectly honest, uh, if you had to sign out at this point. Uh, if you kind of back up in this corner like this, and you have a triangle roof tile, you can see that turn blue. As long as it matches the other roof tile, well, you can't really see it through. There it is. See it through the wall. That's stone. If it matches that, you can see that the bunker is completely sealed. And you could sign off. Like, really, you don't need anything else. Like, yes, this is a stone raid all the way around. So you're looking at 10 satchels anywhere you look. So it's good in that regard. Like, you don't, you literally don't need metal for this. That's what makes it so good. And always leave whoops, and always leave this tile here as twig. Always. Then you would hit this with a rock, a stone, whatever, because it's soft side. And when you do, it opens up the bunker. Okay, it's also very important. Let's just go ahead and remember to do this now. Um, when you're in here, please place your sleeping bag. We're going to go ahead and place a 
I almost said tool cupboard, a workbench here. We're going to go ahead and give it the upgraded version. This is where your level one would go. And since you already have uh, the doors and stuff placed, we can place a bag here. Now, what I would do is rotate it like this and push it all the way up against that socket. And if you have your friend with you, place it like this and then push it all the way into that other bag. So when you do get a chance, you can both place uh, the door frame, but also another box. We'll get back to this here in a second. Okay, so what you can do now is you have a choice. We can go from here and go right to the farming section, which is just below my character, which, um, yeah, you can probably just go ahead and do that. That's what we're going to do next, and then we'll do the airlock for the bunker portion. Uh, usually I like to fill out the bunker airlock first, but I kind of want to make sure that you guys know what this is like. Because this is so important, you literally, if you can get yourself a mixing table, whether you buy it at the bandit camp for 175 scrap or whether you find it in the loot tables, it is so important because you can just pick berries in the forest and start crafting Ortiz immediately, which will immediately give you a boost for your wipe, like across the board. Like, think about it. You're just getting more for everything you're hitting. I mean, from metal to stone. Yes, please. So let's say you do get that or you find it on a drop. You can place your mixing table back here. Uh, save up your tarps. They are important. Now you can stick your input water storage here for your salt right there. Then we're going to place a couple wall frames on this side like this. And then if you do save up enough for a water purifier, oh, whoops, you can place it in the back here. If you don't have it, you can use campfires in the primitive uh, water cleaner, but it does chew up water and it does eat wood. But these are nice. I would save up for these. You can buy these at the outpost. Place it in the back. And then what we can do here is, uh, I think if we place a door here on this back side, kind of opening outward, you can even place a garage door here. I know this is a bit more advanced, but once you do get one, you can place one here. And then we'll kind of just place these here like this. And then what's really nice is we can take a single tray here and place it diagonally. So yes, we can grow from this, but more importantly, we can make clones rapidly. So remember when I said you can also clean the water at nighttime by filling up jugs and everything else? Well, in that same process, if you have a good seed, even if it's not perfect, uh, if it's good production seed, you can use that and clone it uh, rapid fire in the middle of the night, which is a good use of your time. This is going to be a metal door on purpose. And the one right here is going to be a wooden door on purpose. And then we'll pull back so you guys can see what's going on. And then we'll stick the top on. So um, if we kind of back up here, you can see where all this grow area is in the back. Same position. Um, the wooden door to our right that you're seeing uh, that's going to be a place where you can enter and then use drop boxes. So if you already have a drop box, great. If not, you can always go to the bandit camp and buy some and then learn it if you need to. Um, I would suggest doing this. So if you go back into the main cabinet here, the main area, before you place a wall here, if you have your drop boxes, it's best to place these on the interior. So jump on top of your furnaces, make it so the input is facing you. So uh, it's very important that this is in the center of the wall. And it's also in the center of the vertical. So like this is the top of the vertical and this is the bottom. So find the center and then left, right, center on the wall. It just gives you better uh, mobility. So whenever you place on the side that you're on, it always is the chunkier side than the opposite. Let's see if I can get this to go halfway in the wall so you guys can see what I'm talking about. That'll make more sense here in a second. Probably. Maybe. Maybe not. But you see what I'm saying? See how that lip is much smaller and this one's much chunkier? That's why. I like to have the withdrawal side over there and then the deposit side over here. So then we're going to get on this side here, uh, rotate it, and then we're going to hit the top of the wall, hit the bottom of the furnaces, bring it up a little, and then make sure it's left and right, and then place. The reason why is you don't want these riding too close to the top of the sockets or the left and right because it makes it very hard or impossible to place a ceiling tile, and you need these to be covered up. These are just nice places to do drop-offs if your bunker is sealed, just saying. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the roof tiles on here, and then we'll do the airlock. So already with this built out, you can deposit things inside of your base. You can start to craft things and purify the water itself, although you will need power for this. So I guess I guess we need to wait on that. Uh, actually, what we're going to do is we're just going to seal this side up here and make this more usable. And again, I love leaving these as wooden doors, because think about it. All you really need here is enough to keep people off of your back and it really confuses people let's let's remember it's not about looking rich it's about looking low tier so nobody wants to raid you so this side would be the side you would use to deposit into your bunker and this side would be the withdrawal side so either way you're protected by an airlock and it hopefully it confuses people all right so if we pull back one more time 
Uh, we're going to start building off of the airlock there on the left where the bunker is going to be. Let me go ahead and place Twig there so you guys know what I'm talking about. Hopefully the chat's not falling behind here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Trying to get this all in one good take. So that's where the bunker uh, section is going to be for the base. See that over there? Oh, by the way, before we do that, uh, I am once these are all placed, I can place the window here, soft side facing me, and then make that stone. And then once you do get uh, the glass windows, you can place that there. And then um, you can place your interior here however you like as far as boxes, although I would suggest saving your second shelf here until you get your battery. Uh, we'll go ahead and get that taken care of here in a second. So I like to stick a large box here in this back corner. Just really nice for everything. See what I mean? Nice and condensed. You can actually cook in here. Um, so let's say you do find a uh, medium battery or you can't find one and you need one. I would strongly suggest going to the bandit camp to buy it for 75 scrap as it does take a piece of tech trash. But it's the perfect size for this. And uh, the perfect thing to charge this with will be solar panels. I should probably not have that door there. You know what? Let's take the door off. The solar panels can be bought at the outpost for 75 a piece. So you can already start to see that things can get rather expensive. But each of those components, both solar panels and batteries, will take tech trash to make. So, you know, use that knowledge however you like. I, I don't know about you, but I don't always have tech trash right away. So this is kind of a nice thing to put in play uh, as soon as you get it. So once you have that there, then you can place your boxes up there on the other shelf. I'm probably not going to place this the right way, but you guys will get the right idea. There's many different ways to pack your TC corner. But this is nice if you've got the battery there. And then you leave yourself just a little bit of room so you can actually place. Am I the worst at placing this or what? What is going on? Of course, there it is. Jeez. You get the idea. So this is your main TC cabinet. And then um, we're going to wire this up here in a little bit. Okay, so that should all be good. Make sure you've got sleeping bags. And then we'll go ahead and upgrade this to a garage door. Um, just so we don't forget. <laughs> Place that on the interior. We'll go ahead and throw a lock on there. All right, so let's go ahead and do this airlock. All right, so this is right where the uh, mechanism is for the terrain bunker. So here, uh, I'm going to place an elevated triangle. Then actually delete this. Leave it nice and free. These are both going to be stone. I'm going to go ahead and pull back one time so you guys can see this because it's probably a little bit confusing. All right, same position as last time. I'm going to get a little swig of tactical cylinder ah. so what you're going to do here is you're going to place a wall soft side facing you then you're going to place a door frame here that's stone but then you're going to place uh, door frames here that are going to be wood again to keep up that nice illusion that you don't have anything inside worth rating and a lot of people have already messaged me saying, like, they've done this for a wipe and it works totally. Like, their base just gets skipped over. Because you kind of look like an rp -er, and that's perfect. And then, really, you want to make sure this foundation stone because people can look up under it. But then, to keep it with the illusion, make that wood, too. Why not? Let's get crazy. I'll pull back so you guys can see it one more time. And it's just nice because this will give you roof access to kind of jump back on top of the base. But also give you two places to go outside of and give you a single pass through and kind of like a nice peak. So if someone's going to camp, they have a 50 50 for this backside, right? But more importantly, we'll be able to get to the rooftop. And this will become a nice drop off for us. And I'm just going to stick twig here. I kind of like to leave that twig as the whole wipe goes on, but we're going to go ahead and kind of cap off the rest here. We're going to make this uh, a wood doorway frames. I would make these wood because you'll knock these out later to make these garage doors. Yes, you can see a single pass-through theme happening here quite often. Then I like to make this outside piece stone because that's um, part of your protection. And then this is an interesting place, this jump up area. It gives you a nice half wall section. So it's really good for things like uh, boxes. You can even do some processing here if you really want to. I like to because sometimes the bunker's closed and you just, you know, you don't have time for that. Uh, this back side here is going to be uh, soft side facing and then soft side the, or I'm sorry, hard side facing you this way uh, because we're going to stick a locker in here at some point. Let me go ahead and back up so you guys can see it again. I hope that helps. Somebody's saying console or PC. This works for both. Uh, this is more focused around a solo and a duo. Let's go ahead and put these roof tiles on here real fast. These will also be stone. 
you're gonna place like boxes up here and then like sometimes you can stick some furnaces down here. I like to stick a furnace and a fridge. Fridges become very important. I don't think I have one on my list. Excuse me, I'll have to pull one out. I'm trying to make this fast. Boys. Okay, and then when you do have metal, you're going to want to place a metal door here at least. It kind of keeps people off your back. Have that open inward. And then up here is kind of the same scenario, but I guess it's really not because you really want to keep these wood because you're going to upgrade this to wall frames at some point. And keeping it wood is just really nice to soft side out later. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make our second floor storage area. And then we're going to put a wall frame here, a wall here, and a wall here. So let's go ahead and make that stone, stone, stone. We're going to put a half wall here and then a slate there. Okay, so to get a locker, if you don't find it in your journeys out there, you can go to Bandit Camp to purchase one. Again, if you don't want to stick a locker in the uh, honeycomb here, you don't have to. Uh, but I would suggest keeping this wall soft, soft on the interior. It just kind of keeps people off your back. Let's go ahead and put the locker in place. I like this. And then you can stick like a lock on it as well. So you kind of keep it in the center and kind of just slowly bring it towards and then push it back. And then you should be able to place a window frame here, soft side facing. And then you should be able to stick a cap on this. And this will be a standard loot room. I guess we can just throw some boxes down here. You can dress this any way you want to. Um, nothing super crazy as far as reaching stuff. I like a little bit of uh, reach in here. I like the, the standard four large and then some smalls there. I guess the uh, the grills are, are less operable these days. But for us on console, we can still do that. But I know PC has gotten rid of that. So well, They also have an increase in box size too, which um, I'm very jealous of. Anybody? Anybody? So here's going to be the jump up to go outside or to the second floor. I'm going to lock this off. Uh, this outside piece here is going to be for your grow up, so just make this wood for now. This backside here can be stone, but these can be wood. If you want to keep them all uh, stone, but leave just this one wood, it's going to help because if you want to expand later. But hey, if you're like, hey, I don't want to, I need to protect myself, by all means. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull this back so you can see where it's at. And we're going to seal these up here in a second. And then even though you may keep these wood, I do keep the roof tiles stone it just when you're throwing like flames and stuff it kind of settles and it's easier to do when things have a place or a plateau to sit on so yeah it's kind of nice to keep your roof like that all right so what we're going to do here is wall frame and then we're going to create the upper deck here and just standard top here. If you want to have another floor, you can make this wood, but if not, you can just make that stone. Again, for the same reason. Uh, it makes it easier to knock out wood. And then this can just be a swing door. It should be a swing door. Goes out. And then if you do, if you're lucky enough to get yourself a shotgun trap or you can buy one, uh, I would suggest putting one down here facing inward. And then we'll quickly get the rest of this dressed up so we can get the rest of this logically put together. It's just real nice. If someone drops down, they get popped. And let's not forget, even if somebody knocks out the wood frames outside there, they're still going to have to come into a door and then a garage door here. So it's still pretty beefed out. And then this will also have a garage door as well. So hopefully you're leading them around by the nose and they don't really know what's going on. Okay, so what we're going to do is I think our next step is to... Okay, so let's say you've got enough money for all this. Uh, now you don't need these doors. You're going to turn these into garage doors. You're going to knock that out soft side with like a machete or something. Probably leftover pickaxes or hatchets. I know we just did that, but just in case. Then make these roller boys if you can afford it. I hope this isn't longer than 40 minutes. <laughs> Trying to go quick. Just to show you how everything kind of comes together down here. Uh, you can also see that the bunker does still work. Roof triangle back up in the corner. It'll turn blue on top of the twig. It. And you got to kind of crouch and then back into the corner and then match whatever the outside is and then boom, it's sealed. 
you're good to go. And I do like to leave this twig. You can see that the bunker is completely closed here. And normally you would stick stuff in that dirt area and grow it, but it's no, it's no longer viable for us now, is it? Let's go ahead and pull back. Oh, you know what we got to do here? We forgot. We got to put a roof tile up there. All right, so pull back, and then we'll show you the around the base, and then we'll show you some of the filling out here for the uh, planting part. You can kind of we'll walk around the outside, see what this looks like. Main entrance, single pass through. Keeps things nice and loosey goosey. I will show you a way to actually build up there and then protect your bunker entrance. This is back where the uh, honeycomb slash drop boxes are and also the grow operation, cloning zone. Oh, we're gonna actually flush a lot of that out here in a sec. This is quite protected. So let's go ahead and do some of the upgrades here and then we'll go to the electricity. We'll try to save that for the last portion. So this one's a little weird. I don't, sometimes we can get this to place, sometimes we can't. If you can't get it to place, you can always kind of wrap it around a bit and then get it over there like this. We just had it right there. That seems to work sometimes. Uh, yeah, it's it's a weird one. I, I know on console it's much easier for us to place that. I think there's been an update here on PC that's made this a bit more difficult. Not really sure what's triggering that, but if we're on console, you don't really have to worry about that. But essentially, you're going to place a foundation here. Uh, right where this would be, and then you're just going to build uh, stone half walls here to kind of fill this all out. Use your imagination. And then when you want to upgrade this, you can just go on the interior of our grow operation here, and you can actually touch it from the wall. We're going to do the inside core. Whoops. We're going to do the inside core, too. I'll show you what this all looks like. So if you wanted to upgrade this, you would come inside here. Uh, you would come inside here and then touch the wall, and then upgrade it to metal. Metal's realistic. If you're really rich, then you can upgrade it to something else. Just a nice way to do it. Okay, I'm just going to float out so it doesn't take me forever to get in there. And uh, we're going to add honeycomb to the exterior here. You know what? Let's go inside and do the interior first. So you guys can kind of see what that looks like. Oh, yeah. And this would have to be metal. And then you can see that the bunker fits. But if you want to open it, you got to spawn on your bag. Then you pop that. And you're good to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and upgrade the interior here. So uh, this would be metal. This back would be metal. Metal's pretty solid for most of this. Um, sometimes I say to go up here and make that high quality when you can. But really, if it's metal, that's fine too. Because it's sitting on top of a lot of uh, extra pieces. So you really don't have to worry about it too much. Um, really, I would say make this metal only when you have an armored door to go in this slot. If not, stone's fine. Because it's literally sitting at your bunker entrance. I would make this back wall here metal. And let's see what else. Uh, you can make this metal here. And make sure that you do have the uh, glass windows for this piece back here. If not, metal bars work. Just remember, people can kind of reach in and burn stuff. But if you don't, these will definitely work. You can also use the armored pieces. But don't ever upgrade these walls past metal because it's a waste. And let's see. I think we have most of that there. Uh, you place your boxes. We have these here. Where the bunker piece goes. Okay, so now let's go to the outside and let's do the uh, upgrades. The honeycomb pieces. There's not too many. I think there's just this back piece. This is the back wall of the tool cupboard. Square. Just going to upgrade this. And we're going to add the electrical. Kind of show you how the water mechanism works as well. Boom. Easy peasy. And again, just imagine this is triangle and this is elevated. We don't really have this problem on the console version. It's mostly for PC, but I know of PC, if you kind of walk around this a bit, go from the top down, it kind of fixes itself for some reason. Don't know why, but it will. Okay, so let's say you finally have enough money to go out there and get yourself some solar panels. Thank goodness. So let's go ahead and place those on top. We'll also need some root combiners. Hopefully by then you have all of those things, either learned so let's go ahead and just go to the rooftop. Okay, so best place for this. This whole operation can really run off of two solar panels, which is great. So uh, one side you want to be northeast. So use your compass. And the other side you want to be southwest. This will give you the best day coverage for morning and afternoon. I like to place them here on the outside. And then uh, once you go on the inside here by the airlock, you're going to place... 
Actually, let's go in the interior. I do like it all the way on the interior. What I like to do here is I like to place these root combiners on the ceiling here. And I like to start like this. Kind of work my way out. And leave a couple extra so you've got extra slots. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this purple spot and we're going to plug it into the battery. Uh, over here. While we touch the wall here, bring her down. And then we should be able to look up here and then hit it. Okay. So we don't have anything plugged in yet, but this just kind of shows you where all this gets daisy chained together. It just gives you more inputs. And if you need more than this, then you can start to add more on the ceiling. It's just kind of a nice place to keep things consolidated. Try to do this quickly, boys. All right, so from the roof tile here, if you see one of these sides, it should be here. I like to place it on the foot. And you go inside of the airlock here, jump up to the shelf. Uh, place this here, and then we'll just kick it out to the wall, ride it all the way around, all the way around, excuse me, the frame lip. Take it here, ride it down. Go to the interior. It's kind of nice having these little uh, cable things out all the time when you're walking through the base. It makes it real nice. Come in here. And I apologize if I'm using the admin stuff too much to fly through, which just kind of helps accelerate. So I'm just going to teleport to the roof. Kind of same idea, but I do want to walk through it for most cases, uh, so you guys can at least know what that that's like. Because it takes a bit of time, and sometimes you may need your boy to be out there to guard you. You know, it's a thing. And don't worry about these cables. If somebody breaks a wall, they will hover there. Only if the objects connected to them get busticated is when that's going to happen. And then we should have everything we need for this once it's plugged in. And again, during a day-night cycle, you have very consistent power. As long as you keep things in the 25 range or under, even though this can support 50, I know, uh, it just keeps things nice and tidy. So I always tell everybody, get these plugged in as soon as possible and start charging. It's just a good way to go. And you see we already have like two extra slots here. That's for expansion if we need to. So it's not going to hurt anything, and it apparently it's daytime. Actually, I have admin time on, so that's why you're not seeing things correctly yet. Okay, so the battery's got everything plugged in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull back. Let me just show you the top of the, the base here so you know what that looks like. We're going to go over to the grow operation on the first floor and get everything wired up. But the idea is we're going to take a switch, take it from the power out of the battery, and then push it to a, uh, a branch over on the grow operation, both, both on the first floor and second floor. And then we're going to need a timer for our water purifier. Because it's good to run that, like, slowly. Alright, so I need two lights. Where are the lights? Um, lights aren't too bad. You can buy those at the outpost. I don't know where it is unless there it is. You can buy them at the outpost if you're having a hard time finding them. But they're not too bad. Oops. It's kind of nice when that's open. That shotgun trap just takes your legs out. See ya. And obviously, oh, you know what we forgot to do here? Duh. We need to put a crop lot down here. What am I doing? So if I didn't tell you earlier, save your tarps. You're going to need them for so many different things from water storage to crop plots. Uh, they're very valuable. Not only for like grinding up when you really need cloth, but like keep them in the um, tarp phase as long as you can. Because they're hard to get otherwise. Fit this all the way back here. We should be able to fit this water storage container, which again will take tarps. Try to fit it against this back wall the best you can. And then we should be able to place two of these small guys in here, if I can find it. I'm hoping this is quick enough than the last one that we did. There you go. Fit one there. Fit one there. And, believe it or not, believe it or not, you are going to be getting these, so save these whenever you can, these water jugs. These are going to be your overflow, quite literally. So when this container fills up with 20,000, you're going to fill up these jugs with clean water. And also be advised, do not throw your uh, salt water on your crops anywhere on any floor because it's going to hurt you. One milliliter of salt water will ruin a crop plot. So just so you know, keep it free and clear. And if you don't find any water jugs, you can buy them empty at the bandit camp. Believe it or not. Okay, so we're up in the grow up area here. And we're going to place a light on the top here. Hopefully this all makes sense. Um, you really just need one for this, and then one for downstairs. So if we went all the way out, we went downstairs. This is the entrance. 
I know, it's tight, but it works. This is so nice for like just functional stuff. Because I'm telling you, you're just going to be sitting on your bean bags. Or you're waiting for nighttime because it's extra dark now. This is just such a nice way to kind of get everything set up. And what we're going to do is find ourselves a branch. And then I think I have a timer already. Is there a timer in here? Nope, I threw it out. Okay, so we're going to grab a timer and a branch, which is the black rectangle. And it's not anything too crazy. We're going to place it right about here on the metal wall. And then we're going to place our timer over here. Where's our timer? Right about here. And what we're going to do is we're going to need a hose tool and a wire tool. So we're going to start with the wire tool because this is probably the one that takes the longest. We're going to find the light on the pass-through and kind of just uh, slink it over here and then kind of walk through the base entirely, get up to the second floor again by the grow operation while your cable is still active. Then you're going to bring it up here by this bottom frame, bring it across to the lamp. I know it's not turned on yet. Then we're going to go down to the core here again. And what we're going to do is we're going to have that switch right here. This is the main switch, so you can turn all of this off even if you're inside the bunker and it's sealed. That's on purpose. We're going to make this red. We're going to find the output of the battery. You always hear me say, no matter what application you're doing for any kind of electricity, it's always have the first thing that comes out of your battery is a switch. It just stops all leakage anywhere and everywhere. It's so good. I'm going to bring this over here and then down the wall just about here. We'll walk all the way outside and back around to our water purification area, our grow operation, to the interior, and place it to the bottom of this. Now, what we're going to do is on the left side of the branch, we're going to make it three instead of two, and then we're going to make our cable yellow. We're going to use the left side of the branch and go up the wall, up the, oops, up the wall, keep sliding. And then plug into the lamp. Lamp. Oh, you know what? Let me turn the switch on so we kind of know what's going on. Okay, so now this light will work on the interior here as well. And again, once all of this is getting cleaned, you can actually start cloning things here. Once you have a good production plant, it doesn't have to be a super seed. It can just be one that's decent enough to grow. This will work. And then what we're going to do here is they're going to take the blue up and over the wall here. Hopefully, am I going uh, fast enough? Or am I going too fast? What do you guys think? This goes right to the timer switch. Then we're going to take this over here at the side of the wall. And then the input for this is right there. Now, because this finally has power, once this is lit up, you can set the time. So you're going to hold the action button. This will most likely be things like 5 minutes, 10 minutes. We'll just make this like, I don't know, 40 seconds for argument's sake. And what happens here is when you turn this on, it'll run for that amount of time only. And then it's only going to use that amount of power. So, Because um, you don't want this always on because it doesn't always make sense. And then what we're going to do now is switch out the electrical tool for the hose tool. So I guess what we're going to do is we'll try to find something like, I don't know, orange. So we'll find the water out here. This is going to be the input. So this will be the salt water tank. We'll have it touch this back wall here. And it's interesting because normally you would need pumps and stuff to move this around. But because the desalinator here has a water purifier has a motor to both suck it in and push it out this will actually work in our favor where we don't need a water pump as long as we don't have to go too crazy with how high or how long we make it so this orange hose for the output for this is going to go upstairs in the same fashion it did last time we're actually going to run along the wall here we can bring it back up actually we could probably just leave it like right there so once we go upstairs again we come around this back wall and just kind of bring it up I'll let it drop down to the funnel on top of, if I back up. Now, once the pump is running, this should be enough to clean it, to suck it in from this container, whoops, from this container here, to suck it in, because it has a motor on it, you'll hear it. And then that motor will also push it out, and then upstairs to the second floor clean water storage here. Now, if you don't, if you want everything to be self-contained down here, that's fine. You just cut this cable, and then you'll have to manually take the water out of this barrel because it does have a little bit of container. I think it's 2,000 on either side. This is input salt. This is output clean. Um, and yeah, that's what this container is for if you need to. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and get a couple salt water containers here so we can kind of test it out. So you see what we're talking about here? And again, you'd have that set for probably 5 or 10 minutes, give or take. And again, 
it's nighttime. You come out here so nobody can see you. Fill this up with salt water. Be sure not to splash your plants with it. Nice and easy. And that's the thing. If you've got a little bit of extra time and your clones are doing well and it's not daytime yet, you'll go out here and fill up as many of these things as possible. You're going to fill up your main uh, input here as much as you can. And even now, because this is slightly elevated than the other container, it's going to slowly bleed into the other one. 5,000. Now watch this. We're going to turn it on and it will slowly start to clean that water. Then any other extra saltwater containers that you have full but they won't fit, just stick them in the water storage under here. And then I know we have this thing on console uh, where we couldn't place this box here. That's a glitch. Whenever they fix it, you will be able to place that there. If not, you can always default to this box container. Although I think they fixed this, but I, I cannot confirm. Okay, so what you can do here is once your water is clean, you can actually splash that water here using a water jug that's clean. Splash it here. You can start to replicate your clones quickly here because this light will keep them good. You can actually do a straight grow here if you'd like to because um, remember this only takes 3,000 milliliters as opposed to 9. Uh, once you have good input here, uh, you can have this run. So I just tapped that one time. If we go to the main battery source here, you can see how much it's using. How much are we using? There we go, 10 units of power. And then it should drop down to 5 when this is off. So again, it's very power friendly. You can see the clean water is coming here. But uh, since the motor is running, it's actually pumping it upstairs as well. So you've got two grow operations here that you can go full bore to take full advantage of all these T's. Uh, you can get this going immediately during a wipe. You can have a very protected base. And again, you can use this as your starter. Uh, if you had got another base design in mind, or you can just use this as a base and then create multiple bases like this because, hey, let's be honest, it's cheaper and harder to raid two bases than it is just one bigger base, especially if you're solo. Let's go ahead and check the cost here for upkeep. This is pretty much everything fully upgraded. And we're looking at 2,600 stone, 731 metal fragments, 5 high quality, and 403 wood. So one tree... Uh, three metal nodes, one, well, two metal, uh, three metal nodes for high quality, uh, two metal nodes for the actual metal fragments, and three stone nodes total for each day. So more than enough to have things for a wipe. And believe you me, you'll have this filled up with loot in no time. And if you have excess materials, consider building another one of these across the map. So there you go. That's the T-Wedge version 2 that we have. And you can use this today. And this is definitely cultivator friendly. 